Yes, come close, there's no time to wait. Time to wait. Come, baby, come on, Lino Machi. Me want to be your daddy boy. 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 Tell the DJ to play this song once again. To chase the music, walk with one of the DJ. Nip them sick, nip them sick, nip them sick. It's not be reggae and no calypso. No calypso. But tell the DJ to mix this tune again. It's not be reggae and no calypso. No calypso. But tell my people, let's bring this back again. It's not be reggae and no calypso. But tell the DJ to play this tune again. It's not be reggae and no calypso. But tell my people, let's bring this back again. <laughs> Kumboka, siku ya zamani, wabibi yetu na vaa sekate Hapo, nyele hawa, naonekana maredadi Mimi naingea, white rhino, nasekia Mimi ni lopa, wanaona, komple, ndio mimi Leo mina kuja kwa kalabu, mina vaa, gaboni, na bell bottom, meyango Hakuna shida, hata kama baby, wena vaa, swimming costume and that is a Sabala. Before that, we played uh, Soka Osabe, another beautiful uh, inspirational song from uh, uh, Jamal Waswa. Welcome to this episode of uh, Jam 101. The name is Calvin the Entertainer. I don't know how you are doing, but this uh, uh, beautiful morning we bring you yet another edition. Of course, uh, this is my story edition where we have uh, different uh, people from different walks of life that come through uh, to share their stories their journey to where they are right now and we believe you is watching you know you could be you could pick something you could pick some inspiration uh, from what they've been uh, through now this morning I am joined by a young man his name is a uh, zillion basic you have so many names man how are you good to have you on the show yeah. Uh, you are doing so many things for yourself from uh, what you can actually tell us. Yeah. What is your real name? Um Best J Bernard. Best J Bernard. Yeah, those are my real names. Those are your real names. Yeah. Now what do you do? I'm a, I'm a singer. Apart from singing I do graphics and program editing. Okay. And do some photography. Alright. Mm. I do very many things. I also do some tattooing sometimes when I'm not doing this graphics thing and all that yeah yeah all right now zillion is here our oh, Bernard Bessie is here to share his story and uh, before we get into it I think we should just jump straight into the video at number five when we return we get straight into his story check it out let's go
mizanyo je twazanyaka ogo gwo mukwano golwerera zijukire mirunji binji bya wampuliranga kakusibe nati abakanda baluke na cheta sima ebulwa jiwa abakanda baluke na cheta sima Watch you are <laughs> it's a song that you can actually dedicate to your sibling or you know you know brother or sister and it's tied to the old Uganda coming in from a Shifa Musisi one lady that does soulful music this year uh, she's going to be holding uh, her very first I guess concert and I think she'll also be unveiling her uh, upcoming album. Welcome to the show, just in case you've just tuned in. Uh, the name is Calvin, the entertainer. Of course, I'm chilling with uh, Bernard Besuje, aka Zillion Nzuma, a man who just said that he does graphics, uh, he does uh, music, uh, he does uh, tattoos, he's a tattoo artist. Uh, what else? Did I leave out anything? I also do some DT. You also do some DT. Mm, hey, street hustle. Street hustle. Mm. All right. Now, um, briefly, take us through your childhood. You know. Um, I I grew up in Naguru, Naguru go down. Okay. Is where I grew up from. I went to Naguru Katale Primary School, then City High School. Yeah. For my O level, and then went to Ngoi High for my form five then went to nasek for my form six okay yeah and went to U uganda business of media and for my for my diploma yeah in music and music in music yeah all and right now as a young man you know you were raised in naguru yeah uh, okay. how was the life in naguru because when you mention naguru first thing someone will think of of the uh, you know uptown naguru Uptown, be it uptown or not, mm. there are some sharp street smart mm. boys. Mm. Naguri is just about street smart. Like when you mm. talk of Naguri, it's like you talked of Kamocha, you know? Mm. Naguri, Naguri is very, Naguri is a wide place. Yeah. It has Naguru Go Down, where I grew up from. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in the ghetto Naguru Go Down. That is Naguru Go Down. Naguru, yeah, but we also have Naguru here. Yeah. Uh, where it has Bukoto and Tinda. It's very, it's wide. Mm. Yeah. But me, I grew up in Naguru Go Down. Go Down, that is the ghetto. Yeah, ghetto, the ghetto place. Yeah. With both my parents. Okay. And thank God that they're still there. Yeah. And they've really, they really did a very great thing raising us up. Yeah. Because I'm not the only child. How many kids are you? We are five. Okay. Mm. And um, yeah, like I've been moving my life. When I left Naguru, I had to go to Makindia because of music. Let me uh, ask a question. Um, <coughs> Naguru, you stayed in Naguru from what period? Mm, from my P1. Okay. P1 to P7, then my form, my oh, oh, then from senior to senior four, yeah. till I was in Naguru. Mm. Then HSC, I had to leave and go. You had to. You mm. left home. Or I you left just? home. I studied thing in Makindia. All right. Now, um, 
you are staying in Naguru, mm. then you leave and you start staying in Machini. Machini. Yeah. What were the circumstances that made you leave home and you found yourself in Machini? By the time I was still staying in Naguru, like my parents are so strict, they are still strict, yeah. mostly my dad. Yeah. He could not accept me to move, like even going, checking on friends. What, what age was that? Mm, like the You're primary, pri yeah, primary level from P1 to P7. Yeah. Even my O level, yeah. he could not accept So me. you left home I left, at what age? I left like at uh, 15. 15? Yeah. That 15. was like senior three, senior Sen four? Mm, yeah, senior three. I was like, I was in the middle of home yeah. and Maki India. Yeah. Because I could go during the holds to Maki India, then come back home, mm. like to continue with the studies. What kind of business did you have in Maki I was doing tattoo. By the way, tattoo, tattoo gave me a very big platform, like to think I could stay alone. All right, let me ask you a question. Mm. You left home at the age of 15. Yes. Was it in, in good terms with your parents or you're one of those kids who are like, you know what, I think it's about time to leave home and I do my other things? No, whenever I told my dad I was going to do some music, he could not accept. Yeah. And my mother was kind of supporting, but though she was not showing me that she was on my back. Yeah. The only thing I could say was, Mommy, I'm, I'm going to Maki India. And she was like, what are you going to do to Maki? What are you going to do in Maki? Mm. Uh, then I told her, I, I have things I, I, I work on. Yeah. I didn't want to tell her it was music because she already knew I loved music so yeah. much. Even then when I was still staying with my parents' home, yeah. like I was more of church, church boy. Church I boy. was in KPC. Yeah. I used to dance in KPC and still sing. Yeah. KPC North. In Tinder. You okay. know, Naguru and in Tinder, it's not very far. Mm. And I spent most of my time in, in Tinder, in Naguru, though most of the time was in, in Tinder. Because mm. it's where my talent and most of the things that I liked yeah. were. So you left home at uh, which class was that? Mm, my staying home was not stable because yeah. I, I remember even in Form 3, Form 4, I used to go to Makindi. By the way, there's a family in Makindi that I used to stay with. I had a friend in Naguru. Yeah. When I took him to a studio in Intinda. Yeah. He really liked me so much and he was like, no, my dad has a home in Makindia so you can come and we stay there because he's never there. Yeah. So come and we start moving life there. Uh, what class was that? That was my form four. Senior four. So senior, senior four. four you leave home, mm, you start staying in Makindia. Yes. And uh, maybe you'll also be telling us at what point did you start learning how to uh, draw tattoos, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into our next music video when we return. He shares uh, that bit of uh, the story. Interesting, eh? Let's go. <laughs> Oh, you are 
Let's go, let's go. Now we are young, 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 we are yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. That's a beautiful one. You did that with uh, who Kuzi is that? Kuzi Yeah. Jamaican. Okay. Mm, the guy who was here for Anthony B. Yeah. The reggae show. Yeah. Yeah. And Linked bro, you up. are the one who linked me up, and we did that collab with the guy. Well, anything, anything mm. for anything for our boys. All right. Now, um, just the list that we can do. Yeah. Um, you so back to your story. You were living in Machindi, 15 years of age. You were in senior four, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how did your parents take that? And at what point did you start learning how to design tattoos? You know, tattoos, designing it. You have to be artist. You have to be having some art in you. Yeah. Because you have to be knowing how to draw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to be having some art in you. Mm -hmm. Tattoo is all about art. If you can draw, because my tattoo I used to do and I still do is manual. Mm -hmm. It's not a machine tattoo. You know they are different. Okay. Now the tattoo I was doing is more of manual than the other of a machine. Yeah. This one you just get needles, you tie them. Okay. After you've sketched what you're going to draw on uh, someone or a client, yeah. after you've sketched, then you tie needles three or four of them, depending on the size of the sketch. Yeah. Then after, you get the ink, the ink buying it in town. Okay. You just pour it in like a small tin, then go following the sketch Yeah. Yeah. as you tattoo. So you are self-taught? Yeah. I, I have a friend. He's still my friend. Yeah. That guy was so, so good to me. You know, he saw me like sell stuff in downtown okay. and he's like, brother, can you come? Can you come? I tattoo you. It mm. was my first time to meet him. Okay. And I was like, tattoo? Mm. Why? He, he was like, no, you, 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 you come. Come and we try. I was like, okay. We went. When I reached there, he tried drawing something on me. Yeah. I saw the art was really not so good. I was like, I think I can do this better than you're doing it. Yeah. Then I drew. I have tattoos, but like very many of them on my body. Like then he was like, so you're good at art. He asked me what I was doing. I told him I'm in school. He was like, can you be coming? You draw for me. Then I uh, you sketch on on clients. Then I I apply it. Um, on, on. Mm, mm. Then I was like, it would depend. But my parents are so strict, and even now I'm in school and things are really not. At the time you're in senior mm. four, senior I was in form four yeah. holiday. Yeah, my vacation. Mm. Now, when I went back home, I, I looked at my tattoo, I was like, now oh, this tattoo looks so good. Don't you think I have to be doing this? Because by now, I'm only selling clothes, yeah. like design. I, I, have, I had friends used to send me for like those tight jeans, by then skinny jeans had just come out. Yeah. And they used to see me on them and they're like, hey man, you, wha wha what kind of pants are those you're putting on? I was like, man, this is a new style up. From there, I left selling clothes and I was like, let me first see how much I can make in tattoos. Yeah. I started going to Owino every day. Still I was going there for the clothes. This time but I went there for tattoos. Yeah. Because it's where I started my my tattoo thing. Yeah. I started working with this it's called Mountain. Mm. He's, he's a light skinned and tall. He stays in uh making it. Mm. Mm. He told me you have to be coming and we, we do this together. Mm. When I heard that I was like now my parents how am I going to handle this and my parents I was like now I, I better quit home and go to Maki India I start yeah. my own life when I left home like this I started making money like at a did you have to tell your parents that hey I'm leaving home I no, want to know or no. you just disappeared I think I was speaking in parables because whenever I told my daddy was like if I come back here and I don't find you you mm. move for it yeah. and you know those, those Vachiga guys that are not when they say something they mean it mm. now what I had to do was like now I already know him 
let me communicate to my mom. I told mommy I'm going to Maki India, but I will come back. She was like, ah, those are your things and your dad, you know better. Yeah, yeah. But whenever, like I had, I, I told my mom something and she was like, hey, those are your things with your mom, with your dad. I, I, I just got it on my mind that it's a yes. That's a yes. Mm, when they so, ask. So you leave home, you start staying in Machi India, you're drawing tattoos. Mm. Uh, at the same time, you're hitting the streets downtown, getting a, mm. a clothes to sell to right sell. Mm. so you disappeared from home that was for how long was it where mm. you was it going back and forth going back and forth after my my vacation i had to go for my form 5 hsc okay i know my mother was calling me she's like you have to come back and go to school your dad is asking he's mm. like where did you go mm. i am here and you are planning maybe i'm selling you things like that you know how mothers can be yeah she called me i was like i'm in making i'm very safe i'm going to come I appeared, then the following week was starting starting school. Yeah. I had to like prepare that, that that Friday and Saturday, Sunday, go get clothes, get books, know where I'm going for my Form 5. Ah, the following day was a Monday, I had to come and go to school. My, so dad, my dad didn't even want to see me. So it's the mom that was at the link between? Mm. Yeah, even up to now my mother is so like in touch with me she's yeah. there for me yeah mm. so but, but then um you were were you in a boarding school or it was a day school? my olive was day then day. hsc my dad was like i don't want to see this boy in a day school anymore yeah they took me to Nkowe High. Nkowe High. Mm. all right uh, all right now what we're going to do we're going to get into our next video when we return he talks about his life while at school uh by then he knew how to draw these tattoos he had he had already been exposed uh, to the life of the streets should break it down for the people i don't want to uh, hustle yeah mm. it's um it, it's life that every youth today most of the youths that are going through yeah. if you have something that you want to achieve yeah you have to pass through the hard the rain, the sun, don't mind what you're going to eat. Yeah. Because if you're in that situation, you don't know what you're going to eat. Yeah. You All right. It's going to be talking about his hustle on the streets. I was selling clothes. I was designing tattoos. And how did that affect uh, his uh, education? For now, we get into our next video. Let's see you after this.
Coming in from New Chapter Africa, and of course, uh, that is a Kankweb as a beautiful, inspirational song. You got to be thankful uh, to God for the person that you have uh, become. Who are you? Uh, that is uh, breathing today while well, others have lost their lives. So you need to be grateful, get down on your knees, and be thankful to God for the gift of life. Yeah? All right, now, of course, I'm still chilling with a zillion in Zuma. AKA Bernard. It's actually Bernard Besije, AKA Zillion Inzuma Wakuvimba. He's a tattoo artist, he's a graphics editor, and uh, of course, a programs editor. Uh, he also does what they call the street hustle. Wakuvimba, you say, Okuyiriba. Okay, which he's been trying to explain to us. Now, that be it, you went back to school, by then you had already been exposed to the street life. Yeah. You had started making, you know, some that little money, money for yeah. yourself. Yeah. So how was the life at school? Oh. From five, yeah, was a hassle. Because they took me to a school. You know, my dad chose a school that was away from all these things that was making me be like, I want to go to Makindia, I want to yeah. be in Tinder, I want to be where I go to Kamocha. What he did, he took me to Wakiso. Wakiso? In Kowe. Yeah. There's a school there. He has a friend. And that guy, is, I don't know if he's still that dos there. Yeah. Mm. He was afraid to him. He was like, now this son of mine, he's not been home. He has been in Makindia here. He's doing business and all what. Yeah. I want, to, yeah. Yeah. I want to bring him here. Omukwasa Gani. Muteleze Mulaini. Muteleze Mulaini. Yeah. They took me to a school, brother. <laughs> now you know what that means <laughs> when your parents told the teachers mm. that Mutabalu wa ngemulese, wafunjo mukwasa za. Muteleze Mulaini. Take a Mulaini. Uh-huh. <laughs> now I had him say I'm taking my line. I was like, he is doing my line, Chichi. <laughs> From that day, that teacher. But I have to appreciate him because yeah. he also contributed much to my education. Yeah. He always called me, gave me some work to do. He gave me points to read. He was like, now he was my GP teacher. Yeah. And he acted like my dad in school because yeah. my dad was like, ono mkuwa sa gani mkuwa deburi timu kuwanetu in. Kuba there. Now, so you were no, you were never cane. Mm, they used to cane like you know usual caning in school, but yeah. not everything I do you cane me. Okay. No, that one I also could not accept it. Yeah. Mm. So these tattoos that you had learned to design, mm. um, how was that? How did it play no, out for you? I, 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 when the, when he told me he was taking me to a boarding school, the first thing I did was to buy that ink and the needles and the pen. <laughs> okay. I went with it to school. Yeah. You know, like school life, senior five, everyone is looking at you. You're still new. They're like, hey man, tattoo boy. There's a man with there's a boy with the tattoos in school. Like everyone was saying that, even fe fellow students. Yeah, I can like, see one of these. You know, mm. zillion. This zillion. This yeah, this one I had it. And at what, what, when was this? In senior... This one was senior, senior four, I think. Senior okay. four, you got mm. the first one was Zillion. The Zillion. Then I'm seeing this as well. This one, yeah, this one. Very many, even th this one I did it myself. Then this one. Mm, this one I sketched, then I was like, let me do something small on my body. Yeah. This one I put it on myself, then this one mountain, still this one mountain, and other tattoos. How many tattoos do you have on Very your body? Very many. <laughs> Very many. I noticed you also have a tattoo somewhere here. That is a birthmark. <laughs> it's a tattoo. It's a tattoo. I call it a birthmark. You know, like every time they're asking me, you have a tattoo? I'm like, no, it's a birthmark. So you, you wanted to put an eye drop here? What was it? This tattoo caused issues. I put this tattoo, like, on my way back home, everyone was looking at me. So oh, this I, was while you were still in school? No, I was in my vacation. Senior six there? No, senior, senior four. four. Senior so four. You, you, you joined senior five, five with a double drop on your eye? Yeah. I went with like that because now my dad already told that dose about me. He knew me. And it's like, this boy, I'm going to pay fees and everything. I'm 
what you have to do is to contra and because I also loved school. All right. over now, you were going to this boarding school and one of the things we're like uh, you had to be strapped. You needed uh, your uh, what needles? My needles, my ink to make money because I was used to having money on me. And mm. my dad is this kind of a guy. Yeah. He will not give you money as a boy. Yeah. Mm -mm. He will give you what you need. Buy books. Like uh, the new, uh, you know. Uh, those to things. No, your mother will it's take mother. care of those things. As long as he has paid fees, bought you books, given you what you need as a student, mm. other things that I want to do. That was mm. it. Mm. Then now I was like, now I'm used to having money on me. How am I going to be in Form 5? Like, without money, HSC. Mm. What I, I had to do when they gave me, they gave me 50 to go buy some notebooks and some, some few, few things. I, had, I went and used the money to buy ink mm. for tattoo. I went to school with it. Now students were like, hey, where did you get that tattoo from? My first friend was like, man, I need the tattoo. I didn't want to show them it was me doing them because yeah. the adults had already told me, you're the one having tattoos in this school. I don't want you to influence anyone. Mm. Now what I had to do was to act as if I don't know anything about tattoos. Even when my friend asked me about that, I was like, no, I did this tattoo and I don't remember even the person that put it on me where he is, where mm. to find him. He insisted. First, like those first three weeks, you know, you're new in a school and everyone is like new, you're still making friends. In the fourth week, I was like, but now I'm here, no money. I have my ink in the bag, my yeah. pinch. The first thing I did was to call my friend, this one who always wanted the tattoo. Yeah. It was a Saturday morning. I told him, you know what? We have to wake up early after, you know, we, those morning preps. Eh? Yeah. After morning preps, we will go in an empty class. Me, I will tattoo you. It was like, you mean it? I was like, fine, me, I have all things you want. Yeah. He was like, but you always told me you didn't. I told him, me, I no, just with relax. my tools. Me, I have my thing. Just yeah. calm down. Yeah. After preps, we went to, it was senior one, senior yeah. block. Looked for an empty room. He gave sat, me his tattoo. Sat somewhere in the corner. Yeah. First sketched on him. He wanted a heart with yeah. an arrow. Yeah. I sketched, I put it on him. I told him, don't wash this tattoo until tomorrow. And you know in school, these yeah. things of you have to bathe every day. Yeah. You, the, the, the warden is all over, you know, like boys. All over the place. Yeah, mm. all over the... Mm. the I, I told him, you have to hide so that you don't wash this thing off. Mm. He accepted the following day that it was... That, it was mm, and you, you, we had done it on, on Saturday, the yeah. following day was a Sunday. Yeah. So that Sunday he had to put on a vest, bragging <laughs> in the school <laughs> compound, <laughs> what, what. Yeah, I knew I knew what was going to come because yeah. the, the, the dose had already told me about him, about the tattoo thing, and yeah. so they are, they got him with the tattoo. You know when at a, you know these tattoos when you've just applied it, yeah. it will be it will look fresh. Yeah. Than this one that has already been on you for long. It was looking fresh. It was like, where did you get this? They called all the boys, told us to remove the cloth, the shirts, and. See how many people are having tattoos in the school. Good enough that those had already seen the tattoos on me, yeah. and my dad had already told him about me and the tattoos. Yeah. So now he had to suffer alone in school. So you had your, your <coughs> vest of tattoos on me? I had, yeah, and yeah. they knew about it. Quiet, I sat back. They called him, who did this? The guy had nothing. He had no one to, you know, say this one did it. You see, you know, Zillion did that. Who was saying that? He, my friend, he reported because yeah, they told he him. If, you yeah, he, they told him we are going to suspend you, and we are, before suspending you, we have to first call your parents. We go for the assemble, and they cane you. They cane all of you and all that thing. You know how school can be, <laughs> bro. That moment. Interesting. Yeah? All right, man. Time is moving so fast, but we need his story. We need. Uh, but then again, what we're we going to do? Uh, we're going to get into another short musical break. When we return, Hilda Jacobs is standing by with the Gadgets and Tech News. Then we shall proceed with my story edition right here on Jam 101. Let's get into more music. Make it come my way. I got a lot of things to say. Things to say. Baby, don't be too they try to run away because of another man. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, cool you, cool you, cool it down. Yeah, I see you see me so. I'm not gonna let you walk away. Baby, cool you, cool you, cool it down. Yeah, I see you see me so. I'm not gonna let you walk away. I do 
do what you do. Yeah. Say you want a lama, get a body too. Uh, take your mama, say you want double. Hey, baby, for me, I go turn up. Got you for bed, I go handle you. I'm on no time to deform push. Come closer, make a sample you. So, baby, for me, I go turn up. And if I got you for bed, I go handle you. I'm on no time to deform push. Come closer, make a sample you. So, Welcome back, cool it down, coming in from Mr. P. Uh, of course, I was part of uh, P Square, uh, which is uh, no more. Now, tomorrow at exactly 10 a.m., be sure to uh, tune in because uh, we shall get to find out what exactly uh, led to the split of those uh, two brothers, one of the biggest, I think, uh, duos uh, that we've ever had in Africa. So stand by for that. That will be tomorrow. But for now, let's switch gears and uh, catch up with uh, Hilda Jacobs standing by with the gadgets and tech news. Hilda Jacobs, take it away. This is Hilda Jacobs bringing you the tech and gadgets news update. I can't wait for that story tomorrow about the Peace Square, but no. I have to get a tattoo here from Zillion Zuma. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to look at how you can create, you can use your piece of headsets to create a wireless means if you cannot afford to buy down. For those who cannot afford to buy a wireless earpiece or headphone, this is the solution that you're going to do, what you're going to see. The first thing that you need, you need this pair of headsets. The second thing you need is an aluminium foil. The other thing you need is the copper copper wire a copper wire you're going to see them right on your screen now the first thing that you're going to do you're going to cut you're going to cut these headsets you cut the uh, the the real piece that you put in your ears then after cutting the piece you put in your ears you cut the back the 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 the, the pin you push into your phone you're going to cut it now what you're going to use the the aluminium aluminium paper for the foil for is after cutting the headsets, the back and the front, which I mean, the back, I mean the, the pin you put in your phone. And when I say the front, I mean the, the, the ones you put in your ears. You are, going to, you are going to separate those cables into two. There are some pieces of wire inside your headsets. You separate them into two. And after separating them, you get the foil paper. Then put the foil paper around them, just like you see on your screen. Put the foil paper around the, the left and right. You get the other piece also, put the foil paper around the left and right. And after that, you go to the pin that you put in your, in your phone also. Separate it into two, like you see on your screen. Put the foil paper on the left and right, just smartly, and squeeze it to be tight on it. Do not leave it loose, just like you see they are cutting. Do not leave it loose, and also put the foil, the aluminium foil. Th that foil you use for food is the aluminium foil I'm talking about, foil paper, like you see there. After foiling it, you get the copper wire. When we say the copper wire, that's the wire you see there, that electric wire. Rotate it, like, like tie it around the foil paper that you've made, but make it tight. Make it tight all over, both the pennies and the ones that you put in your ears. After doing that, those will be your, those will be your wireless headsets the ones that you cannot afford to buy down there you can create them yourself maybe if you want it to look good you can maybe get color and put red white and all over then you get it and get the one the the the, the pin that you use in your phone place it either on top or down where your pin is and put it right in your phone then those are your wireless headsets you can put them and use them they will work very well it is not just like I am trying to masquerade and lie to you. Try it out at home. Aluminium paper has no problem. Copper wire has no problem. You can use them and put them right at your phone and you'll have those wireless headsets. The nashing and looking for money and disturbing mommy and daddy because you came back for holidays and you cannot afford one so you're disturbing them to get you money. No, please, Rodney, get yourself one. You can do this yourself at home.
that's it for tech and gadget updates. Let's go, so let's, let's go back to Calvin. All right, there you have it. Quite interesting. Maybe it's one of those things that you need to try out. You know, have your uh, wireless headset. All right, <laughs> we're going to take you back into more music. When we return, we shall be getting into the last bit of this broadcast. Let's go. <laughs> His name is uh, King Saha, and that is uh, BDBD 2018. So far, so good for this brother. Uh, I think he has about two super hit songs. Uh, but about you, they are struggling, staggering. Guys are landing super hit songs. Now, I um, also need to remind you that B2C shall be in concert. Uh, I think it's the 7th of uh, September. Now, this Saturday, they will be uh, on Horizon Vibe. So, in case you would love to be part of our live studio audience, all you need to do is to send us a message on 0781 45 You never know, we might, uh, you know, have an invite, invite for you to be part of the studio fan. Uh, of course, I'm still chilling with Azilian Inzuma, aka Bernard BCJ. And of course, uh, this is the last bit of the show. So, um, Life in school, you drawing people's tattoos, did it land you into any trouble and of course life after the school? Yeah, it did because they had to like suspend me away okay. from that school. Yeah. From five, I went. My dad had to look for another school. Yeah. From six, I was like, no, no more nation. Let me first finish up my school, then mm. I'll look at those other things. Yeah. Mm. All right, life after school, after uh, high school, uh, you joining campus uh, for your father studies. Yeah. How was life for you and how was life after school? After my form six, I now really entered tattooing yeah. and selling clothes, selling those good skinnies and nice, like you know, like how you really want good things. Yeah. This guy yeah. actually hooks me up with bling bling once in a while, yeah. you know. True, true, true. And, uh, you have a good <laughs> eye for fashion, True I that. should say, mm. you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, how has that business, you know, been beneficial uh, to you? I also understand you do graphics, you work mm. with the UBC, but then again, you also have your side business, your side hustles. Yeah. Uh, how has it benefited you? It has helped me do my music, brother. Like, yeah. you know, music, music is some expensive thing. You yeah. don't just come from the blue and you think you're going to do. Yeah. You have to have money on you, you have to have connections, having people like you around, having people to support you. Yeah. Not like me, I, I have no manager. Okay. Now I'm yeah. just doing my own hustle, like you said. I have to look for the money through very many means, tattooing, clothes, graphics, photography, videography, yeah. all those things. Like, you know, to come up with money and do music, because music is something that is taking most of my money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though, you know, like it makes my mom feel so bad. She's like, you're investing much in music. You haven't even started getting anything out there. Mm. But I mean, it's what I love. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. So where do you see yourself? I see myself in a very, very, very good state. Yeah. Yeah. Because with the music I'm doing, people appreciate. You know, sometimes it hurts me when someone listens to my music and it's like, hey, man. They you are mm. Mm. But they only say and stop at that. Yeah. No one comes and is like, hey man, Zillion, you are coming by Ninja Gat College? Tukwasa ganye your thing and yeah. see where it can go. They only come and appreciate me that like you have good vocals. Yeah. Like I write music, I do some jitter. Yeah. And they're like, 
they only appreciate they stop at that because there are people out like there man. some good people out there who could be interested in managing you or supporting you in any way that be they so can. Glad. could you share the details in case you're interested <coughs> yeah I, as zillion zuma i'm doing solo right now i have no one behind me but if someone really came and is like zillion I want to work with you. I'll be so glad. Yeah. I'll be so happy because I, I, I will. I will. I think have found what I'm looking for. What you're Cause, looking? Yeah, because I'm looking for someone to stand with me and we we'll sing. Yeah. I'm also not willing to give up. All right. So how do they reach you? Work Vimba Zillion Zuma on Facebook. Work Vimba Zillion, Zillion Zuma. Zuma. Yeah. Mm. Facebook. Okay. Work Vimba Zillion Zuma. Instagram. Okay. YouTube still. Work Vimba Zillion. Work Vimba Zillion Zuma. I you know maintain that uh, so that it can be easy. Hmm? This man has a no. name. Work Vimba is my, my group name, yeah. though I also put it on my soul. Because I haven't I haven't established like, you know, to be like now I have a crew called Work Vimba, yeah. then me as Zillion Zuma. No, I say Work Vimba Zillion Zuma, that will come All right. when things Your phone are number? Now. My number is zero seven five three zero four one four one one. My MTN is 0773. 24 21 18 give the people your numbers one more time my airtel is 0753 24 21 18 my mtn is 0773 24 7 0773 24 21 18. there 20. you had it um zillion <coughs> he's a, he's a multi-talented young man uh, of course uh, struggling with his music uh he of course uh, directly fans this but then again, he's looking out for a manager. You've just heard his story. So in case uh, you feel you can invest in him, then why not? Why not? You already have his uh, details. Now, um, you, find, you told me you're working on something yeah. in the studio. Mm. Maybe you could give us an acapella. I have a project. I'm doing it in, uh, I'm doing it with, uh, with Dari. All right. Yeah, in Parker Records, mm. Bender's studio. Okay. It's called Waka. Go on, so some Mbebi nzo nkubisa waka, olina waka Mboya mbalo nkubisa waka, alina wako no Mbebi nange, ndaga kuwaka, nsume kuwaka, baby Kuwabo yogelo, yogeza waka Mbotu nulo, tunuza waka, alina wako no that brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, program. Our number one is uh, Bidi Bidi. Any final message that you could give uh, someone out there who could be in the same position like you or someone who is actually struggling, they haven't yet figured out uh, how life would be and what they can do, you know? Whoever that is there struggling to make it, just know it's not dilly darling. Yeah. It's hustle. If you don't have time to give in and see where you can be then my brother or my sister you're off the hook okay. it's a hassle oh, in October. Oh, in maybe must. the women maybe yeah. 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 but there's it's a hassle some of them get mm. shortcuts mm. they say there is no shortcut to success so you have to take uh, the steps that's what it is guys uh, until next time uh, stay blessed we're out of here hey. Mukamrela, would you